Hello, welcome to Mother Baby and Us, episode 4. Mother, Baby and Us. I think we should just go straight into the episode today, Christy. There's no introduction, there's no... No. The episode's about Paris, and let's just do it. Yeah, absolutely. This is our trip to Paris. Um, so we have just come back from uh, a maternity session in Paris, haven't we? Yeah, it feels like a lifetime ago now, though. It does. I mean, it felt like I was there for three weeks, not it did. four days. Um, but trip was booked for three days. It was booked for three days. It ended up being four. Um, but it was just, before we even left, it was just disaster after disaster, wasn't it? Mm. The entire thing. I don't think we have ever been anywhere in the world that so many things went wrong in one single trip no and we the first thing that we were going to talk about i think was the second thing that actually went wrong because the first thing was the hotel we were going to book was fully booked as i went to click it remember yeah so this was the second hotel that we booked it was quickly I, because we were like right that'll do because that's near enough the same distance and uh price yeah so we just booked it without really looking into the reviews and everything because the one we wanted to book i'd sold out yeah so this was, uh, we, d- we, we, we like to do things on a whim, don't we? And we didn't give ourselves an awful lot of time to plan no. this session. I mean, it was planned and the locations were fabulous and everything else. It was just the flights and accommodation and all of that was, was literally booked last the logistics. minute. logistics. Yeah, the actual logistics. So that was booked on the Wednesday and we flew on the Monday. I don't think it was the Wednesday. I think it was later than that, wasn't it? I don't know, I can't remember. It was well, less it was, than a week. Yeah, it was a couple of days before we actually flew. And we should have known <laughs> before we even left that it was doomed. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was the first thing. And then uh, we needed some bits and pieces to, to go, didn't we? Because when the weather at the time of booking everything was looking great. Yeah. And then changed a few days before, didn't it? So on the Friday, we checked the weather and it was going to be raining. Um, so Abigail needed a new rain mark to wear while we were there and I needed a couple of bits. So we did a boohoo order for next we, day. Because we could get a next day and know that it was... Next day delivery. So we ordered on the Friday. Saturday, it didn't come. We thought, do you know what? It's fine. They still deliver on Sundays. Sunday didn't come. So that was the first thing, like dramatic yeah. thing. We had to go scrambling for clothes and we stuff. Did. I had to wear my old dog walking mac. <laughs> Yellow dirty mac. I mean, nobody would ever miss her. She wouldn't get run over because, like... It was like a bleach would be gone. <laughs> Ridiculous. So there was that. Then... Yeah, that just put a bad... Like, it started off with a bad foot, didn't it? Yeah. But that was fine. Like, we, we made that work. Um, Abigail picked me up at three, half past three, and we made our way to the airport for our flight. And... Did, it, did anything go wrong before? Oh, we had a delay on the flight. So... Everything was okay, wasn't it? Until we were on the actual aeroplane, and then the I mean, no, the the security wasn't great. No, we had <laughs> because we have so much equipment that we need to take with us for a session, um, and we do it hand luggage because we're only there for a couple of days. We can't afford to put anything in the hold in case our baggage doesn't arrive the other side. So we need to keep it on our hands at all times, don't we? Yeah, I don't. I just don't trust it. No, like I've never had a good bag go missing, but like I. We know every that time, do, I, 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 yeah, I've known people who have had their bags go missing, and I just don't want to risk it because it is my luck. Like I have the worst luck in the world, and I would it would be my bag that goes missing. So no, I would like my own knickers and my own equipment. Thank you. <laughs> so um, all of the equipment was in hand luggage, uh, and it ended up being seven trays to go through security because obviously you need to take all of your electricals out and put them in the trays. And the majority of those four bags was electrical. It was yeah. So everything was in those trays. And then I beeped going through security, so they took me off to one side to swab me to make sure I wasn't illegally smuggling things. You're um, not the type. <laughs> uh, and then Abigail had to deal with those seven bags on her own. So it was just a kerfuffle, wasn't it? It was chaos, absolute chaos. Because everyone's trying trying to like rush through, and I'm like, well, all of these trays are mine, so unless I move them, like, you can't get through. So let me move my trays, and then I'll be out of your way. Like, I'm not doing it to be annoying, but they're all my trays, so move out my way. Didn't think about that. And I was stood there having a lovely conversation with a woman about my hair and those wrap things, those things you put a bed in. So you wind it around and, and put a bobble in so then when you take it up, it's all nice and curly. So what the, the thought process behind that was, we're through the airport, when I get to the other side, take it out. And my hair's done, ready to like start filming. 
Um, but the woman in security was like, does it work? Where do you get, get oh, it yeah, from? She spent ages just talking to the woman in security. behind me of like six people waiting to be like swabbed. And she was just having a full on conversation about this thing in my hair. While Abigail's stressed over the other side trying to carry bags. <laughs> yeah. So there was that. Then we got on the airplane and the pilot said, we've got a 50 minute delay. Yeah, because there was strikes in the airport. The airport, what is it? Like the security staff or something. Passport controllers there that was striking. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it's been going on for ages in pa- Paris, but they don't let anybody know until the day before. Yeah. So that was a, there was a strike for that, and he said it was a 50 minute delay that ended up being over an hour. Yeah. To be fair, though, he caught up, didn't he? It was meant oh. to be an hour and a half flight, and he did it in like 45 minutes. Yeah, How I have no idea. Another way back, both of them, 45 mm-hmm. minutes. <laughs> Pretty fucked up. Um, so yeah, there was that delay. Then we got to the other side. And I lost you in passport control, didn't I? Yeah, because my passport... So when you go through the security machine, like the automated machines, where you've got to scan the photo of yourself and then stand in front of a camera, and then it's, it takes a couple of photos of you from different levels so that it can, like... AI will tell you whether it's you or not. AI doesn't believe that that photo is me ever. Like, no once has that ever it worked. It looks like you, though. It does look I like know. you. I know. And it's a really bad advert because advert, I did my own passport photo. <laughs> so... It never, no once has that machine ever worked, ever. So I went in and I was like, oh, this is going to work now. Twice they scanned me, twice it didn't work. So he was like, you need to go over there. So I went over there and there was a big queue over there. And then I was thinking, well, I don't know where Christy's gone now and her phone's not working. So the, by the time I got through that queue, um, I didn't, like you were sat on a bench miles away. And well, I had a bit of a panic at this point because it took us so long to get through. I went through, I turned around, I thought... Hang on a minute now. She she was in the machine the same time as me, like two machines over, and she's not in that machine anymore, and I can't see it anyway. And I had this blind panic because my phone wasn't working and I couldn't ring her. And I thought, what if she's been abducted? Like, by an alien through the machine. <laughs> like, where I would I have gone? Abigail, you heard of these things all the time happening to you. <laughs> like, it's very busy. There's, there's chaos happening around you, and people just get swiped. And I thought, I hope somebody's just taken her off into a room thinking that she's smuggling something rather than somebody's abducted her because I wouldn't know what to do at this point. And I just sat there open and praying she was going to come out to some door somewhere. So I just sat there. I thought, right, maybe she's gone to the toilet. No, that's all the way down there. She wouldn't have gone down there without me. Hmm. And I just sat there on the bench thinking, please don't be abducted because I don't know what to do. And then you turned up. I was like, thank the Lord. Yeah, I'd just gone through a different queue because somebody had to manually check how it looked like my photo. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> and then... Literally a few minutes later, we walked to the other end of like the where you get your bags and everything, and didn't have any bags to pick up, so that was nice. We just walked past everyone waiting for the bags. But then there was a rail strike. Yeah, we couldn't catch our train because there was a rail strike. So and we then had to get... Christy was still flustered by the fact that she had lost me, and then said yes to a random taxi driver that we shouldn't have got in. No, <laughs> and it cost us three times more than it should have. And I was sat the whole time going, "Why? Why did you say yes? I don't know. I was flustered." But like I could have told you this was a bad idea. I mean, you know, don't worry, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like some random guy in the airport just went, You look for a taxi and I just said yes because it was and I was in a fluster and then I just got in this random man's car. This is the first time my husband's urine of this, so I could <laughs> I didn't tell him at the time because I knew he was going to be stressed. No, you did take a picture of the number plate. I and did, and I sent it to my friend instead of Nick in case I got taken. <laughs> yeah, and and put your location on so that she knew where he was at all times. She could follow you being transported to the hotel. <laughs> I mean, he got, us there. he got us there in one piece, but he did yeah. charge us an awful lot more than what we should have paid. Yeah. But we were at the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Which I wish he never took us to the hotel. I would have been abducted. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, the room was on the fourth floor. Um, there was no lift. The, s- the spiral staircase. A spiral. I, I don't know why that makes it worse, but spiral it does make stake. it work. It does. It does. Like you're getting dizzy going, and like dead. Have a have a break. Have a break. It's oh, and then have a break. And then do it all again with all the suitcases and have a break. I had to do, I don't know how many trips because we had four suitcases and obviously Abigail's not capable of carrying heavy things so I had to carry all of the suitcases up those stairs while I crawled <laughs> on well, I'm so like I did <laughs> she stopped for as many breaks as I did while carrying all the suitcases <laughs> um and then we got to the fourth floor nobody nobody offered to help there was no lift so we had to do it all ourselves and then we got to the fourth floor opened the door and Abigail I thought she was going to be sick she was like what is that smell I was like oh my god we got in the room it smelled like sewerage mixed with fish, mixed with, like, death. Like, if you had told me, oh, somebody got murdered in here last week, I would have gone, 
Yeah, that thing, that like reeds, like that would yeah. make sense. Like it, it sunk into the mattresses and yeah. like it's just pungent. It was like a smell I've never smelt before in my life. I opened the window. I was like, we can't stay in here. Turned round. <laughs> there's, there's no phone to ring reception, so I have to then walk back down the stairs again to get to get a reception. Turn round, open the door, <laughs> and the door handle come off in my hand. I was just stood there. She was peeing herself laugh, and I was just stood there thinking. <laughs> it was like a comedy sketch. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. There's just disbelief in your face. You're just like, what am I? What, what I was like, how do we get out? Yeah, there's just like a, a little thing sticking out the door where the handle <laughs> should be. And I was like, how do we get out? Yeah. But I managed to open the door anyway. The maid, <laughs> eyes nearly popped out of her head when I was opening the door and the door was still in my hand. So she comes running over, takes it off me. I'll fix it, I'll fix it. I said, right, okay. So I went downstairs and the guy in reception was like, oh, maybe someone was smoking in the room. I was like, I am telling you now, <laughs> there is no cigarette I've ever smelled in my life. Like, I swear, like, we can't stay in there. It's, it's just awful. And he was like, but I have no other rooms. And at this point, I thought, I am going to burst into tears. I am not <laughs> staying in that room. I was like, please, you have to find us something. We cannot stay in there. <sighs> okay, I'll give you another room. I thought, well, where was that room then? <laughs> well, what was you keeping that room for? So, just in case. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I went back up with another key to swap rooms. The maid had fixed the door. <laughs> so, we gathered our belongings. I went to open the door to move rooms. And it came off of my hand again. I was like... Oh, for God's sake. I was like, don't worry, just leave her on the bed. So I put her on the bed and left her there. I thought, somebody's going to fix that at some point. Just leave her there. When they're fixing the smell. <laughs> All I did was open the window and then he said, I'll open the window and air it out while you're gone. Yeah, I know. She, she was like, oh, you can come back here tomorrow. I was like, no, I'm not, get, I'm not, I'm not moving. That's what he said. And then you'll have to swap rooms because somebody else is booked in that room for tomorrow. I was like, yeah, okay. Got in it. No, I'm not moving. <laughs> I said, you, you can't move us back in that room. We're not going in there. He went, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved into the other room. Mm. Which was marginally better. I mean, it didn't have the smell. It had other things going on. Like, you couldn't open the wardrobe, could you? No, we couldn't hang any of our dresses up, the gowns for the the um, sessions, because you couldn't there was the a desk in front of the wardrobe, and you couldn't move the desk anyway, because it wasn't enough room. <laughs> Everything was touching. All the furniture was touching all of the walls. <laughs> so, yeah, there was no wardrobe space. So, our suitcases were open on the floor next to the wardrobe. Um, we were just living out of the suitcase, which is fine. We was only there for three days. Like, yeah, we've done worse. So, that was that. Yeah, and then, um, when we were going through our suitcases then to get ready for our first session, I realised the hard drive was missing. Um, which, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, isn't a bad, like, it is a bad thing. It's not the end of the world, because we could cope without it. But it means we can't offload any of the um, images or anything to the computer until we get home, um, and we yeah. only had one memory card. And we had five sessions booked in, plus all the things that we wanted to do for ourselves as well. So there was a lot, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, we had one CF card. We had plenty of SD cards. It would have, it, like, we would have coped. But um, it wasn't great. No. And we put it down to the fact that you were trying to put everything away in, in security. security. That was one of the things that got taken off because three of our seven trays got taken by security to be swabbed or double-checked or whatever because they didn't know what was in there. Um, and that was in one of them. And they were taking things out and then leaving them places to be swabbed and then coming back. And like it was, They were just taking them stuff everywhere and just leaving it places. And I was like, well, that's obviously gone missing there because yeah. they just haven't given it back. Um, yeah, so that put a dampener on already crap day um but it was fine we carried on and went straight to shoot number one yeah which like was massively delayed but we were there yeah and then we i've got little mics that we um attached to our tops when we're out on location don't we so that we can record things for behind yeah. the scenes and vlogging and stuff um and we got there put our mics on and went to plug the the main thing into the phone receiver yeah, that thing. Um, and realised that the little wire to plug it into the phone was still in the hotel. So <laughs> that, that was wonderful, wasn't it? So the mics went back away. Um, but the session itself went fab. It was lovely. It was beautiful. But we were like really over where we yeah, should have been at that point. When we got there and real like as much as we planned, as much as we could, we didn't realise how long things would take to get to, because of the traffic mainly. Like mm -hmm. it would be like, oh, it's a 10 minute drive. And then... But, like, it's a 25-minute Uber because of the traffic. Everything's just at a standstill. The Paris has got so much traffic. Yeah. It's like, like, well, obviously it's like London because it's a city, but, like, I didn't expect it to be as bad. Mm. And it's just chaos driving around there. Like, it is. I don't know how people do it. It's, it's literally, right, You there's a roundabout that is six lanes wide, apart from there are no lanes because there's no road markings, no. 
and people just drive where they want. Like they'll, they'll just be on the inside of the roundabout, and they'd be like going round two sec. Like they go, they go on the first exit, but then on the inside of the roundabout, and they'd be like, "Oh no, I'll just wait for you until the last second and then go cut up five cars." It's literally everybody has got one hand on the steering wheel and one hand over the horn yeah. because they beep at each other all the time because everyone just drives whenever yeah, nobody listens to the beeps because everyone's beeping, so it renders them useless. Carnage. So we had accounted for enough time in between sessions for us to get to the um, metro that was on strike and get to the next session so at least that was a plus because we'd accounted for a lot more time than an uber would take because we thought we were walking to the station and then getting a train and then all of that yeah but obviously we didn't have time for any of that and obviously there was no trains anyway so we had to uber but four was it four or five ubers in a row cancelled four cancelled the fifth one turned up and it was because they're all such little narrow little windy i assume that's why i don't know and like it'd say yes, and then they'd say they were there, and then they weren't, and then they'd cancel us, and then they cancel, and then it was okay. Yeah, we'll pick you up. We need to walk to the next road, and then we walk to the next road. Well, you're not here, and then it was just. I thought we were never going to leave there. I thought nobody's going to pick us up, so we walked a bit more of like a, a main road, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and then a car finally come to get us, which we were expecting a, a Renault. And a Mercedes. Electric Mercedes turned up. I was loving life. I was like, right, okay. This is how, this is the tide turning. This is how our, when our trip starts getting good. I was sat in the back of that Merc. I was thinking, oh, this is so comfy. And we're on our way to a, like a session that's going to go really well now. That session went fine. Like, this is the tide turning. This is where our luck starts changing. Mm. I was wrong. Yeah, we turned up. I mean, the Merc was lovely. Oh, it was. <laughs> we sank in the back and didn't want to get back out again. I was like, um, this says you've got a Renault. And he was like, I bought a new car. It's much nicer. I was like, I agree. I definitely yeah. agree. <laughs> but we got to the park, which is our, our second location for our next two sessions. Yeah. And it was utter chaos. A million kids. I didn't realise France had bank holidays. No. I thought that was a British thing. I don't know why. I just assumed, well, I just assumed bank holidays was a British thing. Don't you live anywhere else, do you? I, d- I never really thought about it, if I'm honest. Like, never n- never came into my mind. But then somebody was like, well, yes, it's bank holiday. And I was like, oh, yeah. Well, well our bank holiday on that Monday was because King Charles got coronated. So what are they celebrating? Like, what, what's their bank holiday for? But May is, is just a month full of bank holidays, isn't it? So I'm assuming whatever bank holidays we've got, they celebrate as well. Apart from we had an extra one for the coronation. I have no idea, but it was chaos. Eh? It, it was. was absolutely rammed. But... We hadn't eaten all day because obviously we hadn't had a chance to stop at that point. So we went and I had a coffee. Can I ask food? <laughs> um, I had a coffee and Abigail had a Nutella crepe and you were loving Love life. Loving life. I love a Nutella crepe. <laughs> so we were loving life and we sat. We got our bearings for a bit, didn't we? And then we did our recce. Met our first client. I don't think anything else. Like those two sessions went fab. Like yeah, they were. They were, they were all nice and easy. Yeah. We, had, we had a phone call halfway through, like in the break between the two sessions, to tell us that our cousin was pregnant and that was lovely. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it was all, that couple of hours was lovely. It was, it was fabulous. It was sunny. Yeah. It was warm. There was lots of happy families around. It was lovely. Mm. Apart from having to edit the people up the background. Oh, yeah. that was, yeah, that drove me nuts. Those but. sessions were fabulous. Oh, they were, they were great. And then, um, back to the hotel. We yeah. literally Ubered it back, didn't we? And got an Uber Eats because we uh, yeah. had enough of people. Remember the Uber driver? He picked us up and then he was all chatty, chatty, chatty and then went, um, girls, don't ever leave this hotel by yourselves. And we were like, excuse me? And then from that point on, every Uber driver that dropped us back <laughs> off or picked us up <laughs> from that did, hotel all warned us, do not leave, don't walk around this area on your own or don't like do anything Especially around you. Especially at night, don't go out at night. Yeah, so that was great. I slept really well that night. On my foam, piece of foam on a bed that it didn't fit. But they were like prison beds. They didn't have actual mattresses, it was just a piece of foam. But the foam was bigger than the bed. Yeah, but yours was fine. Like, it was a slight big... Mine had like... Let me put my... <laughs> this mattress overhang. So every time I'd get up on my elbow to like get up and move, I'd forget and i go... Whoop. It was shocking. <laughs> and you were like, yeah, mine's the same. I checked the next morning and I was like, no, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fine we slept just about we were we eats because we had had enough of the day and we didn't want to leave and I went walking back down those four flights what did we of have? we had oh, uh, noodles, noodles and, stuff. and caramel and chicken we, and we ordered chicken 
<laughs> spring rolls. <laughs> they were definitely pork. They were pork. <laughs> they were 100% pork. Well, it could be pork or it could be anything really, couldn't it? Well, there wasn't a chicken in there. I could tell <laughs> there was no chicken in that spring roll. Yeah, that wasn't great. But. I mean, you still ate them. <laughs> I did. I ate three and I was like, why? Going, oh, why am I eating this? Oh, I can't eat anymore. Oh, I was like, stop eating them. Stop moaning about it. Oh, I felt ill. I don't know why I did it, but I did. Anyway, the noodles were lovely. <laughs> um, and we ordered croissants for the following morning, didn't we? Yeah, that was like winning. It was. The The plan was to get up early, um, like early, early, and for us to get down to the Eiffel Tower for sunrise, wasn't it? So we were yeah. going to eat some croissants, fill some content, and watch the sunrise at the Eiffel Tower. Um, but Abigail woke up at 3am and it was sideways raining, so we decided to have a lay-in instead, didn't we? Yeah, I just didn't wake up. <laughs> I read my book and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go back to sleep now. Yeah. Mm. So we just set our croissants in bed and that was like the best idea ever to order them in advance, wasn't it? Yeah, lovely life. Apart from they didn't, they wouldn't deliver coffee. And there was no coffee making facilities in our room. I mean, I wouldn't use them if they did. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't imagine what would be inside the kettle if they had a kettle in the room. <laughs> could, oh my God. Anyway, it was sideways right in. Hmm. On the day that we were supposed to be doing three sessions at the Eiffel Tower. Was it three? Two. Oh yeah, two sessions at the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. So um, we made our way to the Eiffel Tower anyway because we needed to film some content for ourselves. With our rain max on, and, and my yellow condom on my backpack. <laughs> she got this thing to cover her backpack because obviously it's full of all the electrical in there, like all the equipment. So it's like a, a waterproof cover but it's like what it actually did was turn it into a sauna suit on my back so that was really sweaty and minging but it was bright yellow to match a bright yellow jacket <laughs> she was just like i can't even I, I can't even we need to insert a picture of you we got the video footage of me talking and there's no audio coming through because we forgot to turn the mic on <laughs> we, we turned up at three different locations didn't we talk to did a little talk to camera it wasn't even little there was one that was six minutes long yeah full on like talk to cameras and didn't realize until we got out of the rain that the mics weren't even turned on so that was great because we got loads of video footage with no <laughs> audio to go with them <laughs> oh. i can't believe so much went wrong over girl i can it's us <laughs> um and then we found a little cafe to get a, to right next to the eiffel tower just to grab a coffee quick and um, dry out yeah a message the next client because it was just it was so it was biblical it was absolutely it was welsh weather wasn't it it, it was, was like it, it was you. dripping off the end of my nose um like my mac even though it's a rain mac isn't actually waterproof because it's a fashion one <laughs> it's ted baker it's beautiful it's got lovely flowers all over it but like there's no waterproofness at all going on so i was soaked through it's dripping off my nose you need to get some scotch guard on it <laughs> I do, yeah. um yeah so we we ended up she messaged us didn't she and she was like um yeah like, i didn't think he was gonna go ahead like it's fine yeah she was like yeah i get it like this is really bad weather um she was trying then to rearrange for the next day when she she was hoping to get yeah to to move things around so we could do a session the next day but we just well that was that so we needed to have a little look for somewhere else to go out of the rain and came across that pinky bloom didn't we oh my god yeah love that place we had mocktails even though christy wanted cocktails but wouldn't let her we had mocktails and dessert Mm. i managed to get myself covered head to foot in a teller because I dropped a knife and then went to catch it and flicked and sell all over myself. Um, but other than that, that went quite well. <laughs> I was wearing white. I was like, if you have Nutella on me, I'm going to go mad. It was all down my chair. There was a lump <laughs> next to me. Like, Abigail had on her face. Like, she was, like, mopping it up off her It trousers. was all up my arm. And it <laughs> oh, my God. Like, how can you get Nutella in so many places? <laughs> it's, like, so far. <laughs> but apart from that, everything was lovely. The food was lovely. Drinks were lovely. Yeah. People were lovely. There was flowers were. everywhere. It's very Instagrammable. So that was a good little find. That was, yeah. a, that was a good thing that happened. Um, yeah. And then we went back to the room, didn't we, to dry out. And you had a two-hour nap. Oh. Which I don't think constitutes as a nap. Anything over an hour is mo- not a nap, is it? Well, it was only two hours. It's not like I slept for six, is it? Like, that's a full night's sleep. Like, two hours isn't a full night's sleep. It's definitely a nap. And I needed it. I was exhausted. From well, walking in the rain. So yeah, it felt wonderful so when I woke back up after that Christy, two hours. Christy had a two-hour nap, and then I read my book for a bit and made some shorts mm. and reels and things and did some bits and bobs. Yeah. Oh, wait. 
this is where I found the hard drive. Because I was you trying did. to go through my suitcase looking for something to wear and found my hard drive. Yeah, I woke up. She's like, look what I found. Yeah. So um, that was winning. I realised afterwards it was because um, I was so stressed getting everything through security that I put it in between all my clothes because I thought, well, that's a squidgy bit. So that'll be padding for it. And I'll deal with it when we've got two minutes away from all these people that are trying to push me through security. Um, yeah. So I found it. So the crisis averted. One crisis. I had a very quick judge in the shower. Just <laughs> a little judge. Not a hair wash, just a body wash, you know what I mean? Like, keep your hair away from the, the water. Um, discovered that the, the shower was actually broken, so it was just, like, put to the side. You have to, like, crouch underneath to try and get your body under. So it was very... You could have lifted it. Could you not? It was... It was it's like just a bit. Is it? Oh, I know, we need two hands to wash, don't you? Do you? <laughs> um, and so it was very easy to keep my hair dry. Um, but I was literally in there for, like, oh, my God, like a couple of minutes at most. And pull the shower curtain back and it flooded the bathroom floor. I was like, wonderful. So I don't know what was going on there. But the, there was like two bath mats. So just like you then mopped it up and it was fine. So we got ready, didn't we? Yeah. So then we went to the Eiffel Tower. And that was like the perfect session. Absolutely loved it. Amazing. Everything that we planned to get done, like each time in, we bang, like we're bang on time. Every single thing. Yeah. It was we perfect. We started like up to the side of the Eiffel Tower walked down underneath did some on like a carousel that's like right at the foot of the tower and then walked all the way back up and had our spot ready for when the lights were meant to come on yeah and i mean we had talked about those lights coming on quite a lot with the um client and her husband yeah she was american so she was like fine understanding us the husband was french who understood english absolutely fine spoke english absolutely fine but like we have accents and I talk quite fast. And I feel like he zoned out for most of yeah, it. Yeah, like you could tell he was glazed over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when we were talking about the lights coming on at nine o'clock, he didn't say anything. No. So come nine o'clock, we're all looking at our watches. She stood there, like, dancing along to the music that's playing behind us. And he's going, what's happening? And we were, like, waiting for the lights to come on. And he said, they don't come on till ten. What do you mean they don't come on to ten? And then that, it was that at, the, at that point she said, but we've been talking about it all night. And he went, ah, oh, Ah, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, they don't come back on until 10. Because it was summer and it was lighter for longer. and So they don't come on until dusk and dusk apparently is not until 10 o'clock. <laughs> so we did everything we needed to. I'm like, don't worry, we'll fake it in Photoshop. Which, I mean, I've done it. And it looks look fabulous. And you've yeah, never tell. Oh my God, it was so much work over there. I sat back a bit of I was. You did, but it was worth it. Yeah. And then, I mean, I've got a lot more to do. You have, yeah. Um, and they came on exactly when they that left. client left. <laughs> yeah. So they packed up their stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then I had a nice little photo shoot in front of the Eiffel Tower with oh, the sparkly lights. Matters, then. So I had a new profile pic. Well, I will have a profile picture when Abigail edits it for me. And then, yeah, you did some bits that you wanted to get. And then yeah. we packed up and went back to the hotel. Yeah, but I really enjoyed that. The weather literally um, it dried up for that entire time. We had the sunset and everything. It was beautiful. And then we got back to the hotel and the ovens opened. We did, yeah. So it couldn't have been... So we Uber Eats again. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't have been any better. We Uber Eats and McDonald's of all things. But it was no. like, like half oh, past 11 when we got back yeah. to the hotel. So that was the only thing for it. A French McDonald's. Which tastes exactly like a British it, McDonald's. It was. I had a Big Mac. <laughs> and it was literally just like a Big Mac from this country. Hmm. Like I've had them in other countries before and they were not Big Macs. No. So yeah, I was impressed with that. As far yeah. as McDonald's go like. I had my chicken egg nugs. Oh my god, this curry's not the same though. I hope it is. I, uh, I can get in the bin. Chuck this straight in the bin. Well, I would have if we had a bin, but the room didn't have one. No, we didn't know. So we used a McDonald's bag as a bin. <laughs> put everything that we needed to go in the bin in the bin. In the bag. <sighs> anyway, we were breathed and... Class answer the morning. We didn't. We all breathed them the morning after. <gasps> we did. So the, the day after, we were supposed to be having sessions when we were in the UK. We had planned for some of those people that we had had the other days to come on that day but everything needed to kind of swap around for a different reason whatever so we ended up having um a day when there was no sessions we had done everything we needed to do everything everyone that had booked was booked for the previous two days the client that we had the day before that got rained off wasn't able to get childcare, so we had to just cancel our session completely um so we had a day of just sightseeing to ourselves mm. So before that, though, we had to pack and get ready. And we did. 
we weren't checking out until half past 11. So we made the most of ordering croissants to the hotel, um, having a nice lazy breakfast. Mm. And then I needed a full shower where I washed my hair because it had rained on my hair so much. It was like a greasy chip. Um, didn't really think about the incident that had happened the day before with the couple of minutes and flood in the bathroom. Um, washed my hair, got out of the shower. It not only flooded the bathroom, but there was a gap this big between uh, in the door that goes to the, the bedroom. Some people are just listening. It was like a four-inch gap. That's not four inches. A big gap. <laughs> yeah, so there was a gap about two inches underneath the door leading into the bedroom. Um, and the entire time I was in the shower, Abigail was eating pastries on the bed <laughs> and FaceTiming our nan to tell her everything that had happened so far in the trip. Okay, because I knew she wouldn't watch the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> and... She was oblivious to the fact that the entire bedroom had now flooded. <laughs> I was floating. <laughs> all of the suitcases were on the floor. All of our clothes were in those suitcases because they couldn't go in the wardrobe because they didn't <laughs> open. So everything was soaked. I got out of the shower, realised this had happened. When running into the bedroom, I was like, I'm okay. She's like, Nan, i got to go. <laughs> Hang up on our Nan. She just sat there and watched me <laughs> as I used the only two towels that were in the entire... Tiny little towels. Oh my God, Tiny. <laughs> That, like they were more like flannels. <laughs> <laughs> Used those to mop up as much as he could. I was like, Abigail, I'm <laughs> like I got nothing else. She's like, you are ripped the sheet off the bed. So we using the bed sheet. When I say we, it's not we. <laughs> I'm using the bed sheet completely naked at this point <laughs> because I'd had to take my towel off to mop, mop the floor. <laughs> She's lying in bed, laughing her head off, eating the croissants at me, mm. mopping up the floor <laughs> with a sheet. So I get majority of everything mopped up. And I'm stood there, naked, holding my hair, <laughs> dripping, going, are you going to help? And she just looked at me and laughed. I was like, <laughs> no, what do you want me to do? <laughs> well, you could have gone down to reception, got me some more towels. <laughs> oh, that would have taken forever, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> so she did help picking some things up off the floor and hanging them up on, like, on the curtain rail above the window. To and open all the windows and just put everything. Well, apparently, that's what people do in France. Because when I looked out the window, that's what everyone else was doing also. <laughs> putting their washing on the balconies and stuff. So I was being French. <laughs> so we hung everything up to, to put it to dry with the open windows. Um, I just air dried. Um, <laughs> and I went away from the open windows. <laughs> <laughs> I went into the bathroom um, because they actually had a hairdryer attached to the wall. I thought winning I just use the hairdryer to dry in it well, obviously dry my hair but dry everything at the same time turned on didn't work <laughs> for god's sake tried everything to get it to work wasn't working so I I dried as much as I could shoved my hair on top of my head got dressed and went down to reception I was like can I please have some towels and also the hairdryer's not working and the guy at reception decided to mansplain how to turn <laughs> a hairdryer on I was like I've been using a hairdryer for 33 years just it's not working. <laughs> Trust me, it's not working. But you need to switch the switch on on the wall. Yes, again, I've done that. It's not working. <laughs> Are you sure? No. He went, oh, that's what he said to me as well. He went, Are you, did you try it now? <laughs> I went, well, my hair is wet. I've just got out of the shower. Yes, I tried it now. Oh. Well, I can assure you it is working, but I will get a new, a new hairdryer sent up to you. Would not believe me that it wasn't working. So, yeah, that was that. We... we Dried everything as much as we could, repacked our suitcases, <laughs> got ready to leave, and then I had to carry all of those suitcases back down the four flights of curly stairs. Curly stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we went. Ah, oh, well, we've got a couple of hours to kill before the airport. Let's go and visit the Moulin Rouge because we absolutely love the film The Moulin Rouge. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So we're like, well, we're not far from it. Let's go and see. Um, so I'm underwhelming. I know. Like the most underwhelming thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I was a bit gutted, I was. I just was like, that's it. See you now. Yeah. So we went and had coffee and looked at the Moulin Rouge that was like four times smaller. I'm sure the show, the show would be great if you went inside and actually experienced yeah. the show, but that was like... The, Looking at it when it Yeah, was the windmill was rubbish. Yeah. It needed to be about 20 times the size of what it was. Mm. But we did make the most of the opportunity and went to a few more places for like pastries and yeah. coffees. We and just went <laughs> hopping round to different places <laughs> for pastries. And then we thought, let's just get to the airport nice and early, get through security, get checked in and everything, and then we can find a nice quiet corner, get the laptop out, and just get a head start on editing, wasn't it? Mm. That was the plan. So yeah. <laughs> of course, it went horribly wrong, because it's us. Mm. So we get an Uber. Um, the guy asks us, we put in EasyJet Terminal, because we were going to the EasyJet Terminal. Um, <clears throat> on the way to the airport, the... 
very, very, very French guy said, which terminal do you need to go to? I said, 2B, please. He went, okay, where did he drop us off to? E. 2E. Great. We drove past 2B and we were thinking, oh, perhaps it's just a ring road. When he comes back on itself, you've got to drive this as far as you can to come back or whatever. No, no, he just dropped us off at 2E. We were like, right, okay, well, he obviously doesn't understand what we're saying, so we'll um, get out and just go and speak to somebody. And I'm sure it's a really easy way to get over to the other terminal because people must go Do between all terminals time. all the time. Like, yeah. it's it's an airport like you can w- walk between terminals um the terminals are so far apart like so far they may as well have been on their own continent <laughs> continent, <laughs> continent. <laughs> um <clears throat> ridiculous so we walk into special assistance in the airport which um i'm quite used to using now because um if i'm going anywhere i tend to use special assistance if there's a big airport because like i can't walk very far as we all know um so we go into special assistance. Of course, they're all French because we're in France. So um, we try to explain the situation and we get passed from pillar to post. How many people do we talk to? I don't know. But people look at you and they're like, she's not disabled. Which is fine. Like, I get it. Like, I don't look disabled, but like, it is what it is. And we need some help. So we get passed, 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 passed. Everyone's telling us, no, like, I can't go and speak to that person, go and speak to this person, go and speak to that person. And then a woman walks in um, and goes, how can I help you? We explained to her, she was like, I'm going to sort this for you. And she was she phenomenal. Was fabulous. And she had really good makeup. She did. Um, so she starts speaking in French to the other woman, saying, this is what's happened. We need to sort it out for these people. She gets on the phone to EasyJet and is like, this is what's happened. We need to get them over to you. Blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, I'm really sorry. I've got to end my shift now. So um, this lady's going to sort it out for you. Okay, great. Now she's been spoken to in French and she understands what's happening. She, like, we'd already spoken to this woman once, and we were like, oh, here we go. But she, now she'd been explained to her, she was like, oh, I'm going to sort it. 10, 20 minutes of her trying to sort it. She ends her shift. I'm like, what are these, they're only doing 20 minute shifts. Like, what's happening? Like, the, the t- turning on the staff was ridiculous. It was. So this guy comes in, starts sanitizing every single area <laughs> that he could possibly, he went to a whole bu- a pack of sanit, like, yeah, what's called wipes? What are they called? Anti-back wipes. And he took her chair, wheeled it out, gave it to her, and wheeled another chair in. He wouldn't yeah, even he sit. Chair. Wouldn't even sit on the chair she'd been sat on. Yeah, he anti-backed literally everything. But he, w- we were like, oh, he kept like looking at us and going, well, can you walk? Can you do this? It's and not far. You can walk it. And we were like, here we go. This is going to be great because he's not going to like understand or whatever. So before she ended her shift, she explained it all again in French, and I could tell they were talking about us because she kept calling me Abigail Louis. Yeah. Louis Savage. Um, so every time she said Louis Savage, I was like, oh, that would be me. Um, she explained it all to him again in French, and then he came over and he was like, girls, I'm going to sort it. Mm. And we were like, okay, perhaps he will actually do it. It was the, the language barrier, I think, mm. was the issue. Um, as soon as they realised I had a disability, they were like, okay, we can sort it, it's fine. So they were going to, or- originally, they were going to do a wheelchair, weren't they? Yeah, which I thought was hilarious, because it was so far to the other terminal, and they were going to wheelchair me while Christy had all the suitcases. All suitcases, alongside her in a wheelchair, <laughs> like Lady Mac. <laughs> so um, that made my day, but then they changed their mind. Yeah, and then they were like, no, we'll send a cart, like a... But then he got thing. on the phone, and he started arguing with someone, and he hung up and looked at us, and he said, I said to them, how long is it going to be? And they said, we cannot do it. And I said, well, that's not a very good look for the for a French airport. And they said, okay, we will send someone. <laughs> and then they sent a minibus. So they sent a chauffeur-driven minibus for us to know a lot of stuff. Um, the guy came, took our suitcases off us, and walked us to the minibus, like, got us on the minibus, drove us the, like... It was like a 10-minute drive. It was. I know, it was so far. So I, I don't know how they were expecting us to walk up. But anyway, um, drove us over. And then as we went to leave the minibus, he said, no, no. And then took... One suitcase, which was Christie's, not even mine. He left me with two suitcases, even though I was the one that was having special assistance, and walked us into the airport. We were like, you've left all your van open. Like, what are you, what are you doing? And he was like, no, no, come this way. And we were like, we'll be fine. Like, I can go at my own pace now. This will be fine. I can, like, sort myself out. He's like, no, no, I take you. <laughs> okay. I had to do a full-on handover at special assistance yeah, in we case got, we got lost en route. We got a special assistance on, in the right terminal. And he goes, this is Abigail Louis Louis Savage. <laughs> And they were like, oh, it's you. And I'm like, oh, okay, here we go again. But I mean, that to get to that point, it was almost two hours after we arrived at the airport. Oh, yeah, two hours. <laughs> of people going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, telling me that it was fine. And then like, oh, uh, but I'm going to change, I'm going to leave my shift now. So somebody deal with something. It was a bit of luck, really, that we'd left with so much time. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because we would have missed that flight. Well, no, we wouldn't have. No. But yeah. Um, 
so we get a special assistant the other side and explain to them like it's fine because we can just walk a bit stop walk a bit stop now and have a look in the shops and whatever and make our way through slowly because we've got plenty of time before a flight so i didn't need wheelchair assistance because like they were taking a wheelchair off somebody else to use like it was fine i could do it slowly at my own pace because we had plenty of time which is why we got there so early and he's like no no i take you i'm like oh my god i don't need like i don't need help please leave me alone and they were like no no we're gonna take you so we get through passport no we hadn't got a passport he gets us so far through security and then it gets the passport lift and then he's like you've got to go up this lift and when you come out you need passports you go through you take the um priority lane because you have your access card and you have special assistance okay great we go up in the lift go to walk down the priority lane and two men were like no 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 come back you're not going down there i'm like why and he was like no no that's not for you you go down this lane i'm like well, it is for me there's a disabled logo right there it says priority and he's like no no you cannot i mean i've just told like We've just been told we've got to go down this lane. It would have been just quicker just to get in the queue of the other place, to be fair. But then Christy whips out my access card like it's a frigging VIP access. And he goes, does this say disability? Yeah. Oh, you can use that lane. But initially he went, I said, no, it's a disab- for disabled access. He went, she is not disabled. <laughs> yeah. How okay. Do you know? And then at this point I was like, I can't be bothered to argue. I will just go and like, just deal with it. I'll just go and stand in the queue and I'll just deal with it and just like sit down when I get the other side or something but anyway we got through the priority lane and then got we sit down at the gate yeah and have a delay we, to be fair that delay started like when we were sat in special assistance in the first terminal but like we were hopeful that was going to be gone by the time we got there but it wasn't and then we had another delay and then, another and then a delay. storm came in yeah and then Another delay, and then they changed our gate straight after the delay. So at this point, we were like, let's just go live. So we went live, didn't we? And we were like, um, this is the situation. And we were just doing a nice little Instagram live. And a nice little conversation with some people. And then they were like, You've, we've changed your gate. And we were like, uh-oh, got to go. Just close everything down. Let's get all our stuff together because it's spread out across the whole lounge. Um, let's get down to the other gate. Unbeknownst to us, it was like two go- doors down, so we didn't have to rush because like, we may as well have just stayed where we were. We moved down to the other gate, it was fine. Yeah. Bit more delays, and then finally they call us to board. So they take our boarding passes, they scan them. Because we speedy board as we get to go on first. Yeah, so they look at our passports, yeah, great. Walk down the tunnel. We Literally like, the tunnel to get on the aeroplane. Third in line to get on the aeroplane. We were literally by the doors that attached to the aeroplane. My phone vibrates, and I'm like, oh, pick it up. As I pick my phone up, you go bing, zzz, bing, 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 zzz, bing, and I think everyone's going, phones are going off at the same time. Yeah, that's not great. Look at my phone. EasyJet has cancelled your flight, and I was like, no, it's a mistake. We, we, we Christy said, what? Did, I said, anybody else? Did anybody else just get a text to say the flight's been cancelled? And everyone went, oh. Uh. <laughs> and I was like, no, it's got to be a mistake. We're all bo- like, we've already scanned our boarding passes. We're already stood in the tunnel. This is just one of them blips on the system that like there were so many delays. Somebody's hit the wrong button and like. And then we hear, please come back, we have cancelled your flight. And all of the staff are waving us to come back down the tunnel, but we can't quite get back through the tunnel because all... We stuck in no man's land because oh there was just chaos. All the people that had normal boarding had just created a barrier and were screaming because they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't allow them to scan their boarding passes because they'd cancelled the flight. But like we were on the other side trying to get through and they were like, well, just it was just chaos, absolute chaos. And more chaos just kept happening then because... All they were saying were, was, go on the app and you can um, book on another flight. So everyone was scrambling to try and get seats on the flight. I had new dad, though. So I was on the phone trying to sort out childcare for my, somebody to take my child to school the next day because, like, I hadn't, I was supposed to be home, so I was going to take him. So I was on the phone and the app was on my phone. So I was like, I'm going to have to go because I'm going to have to get a hotel view. And we literally. I, every, I was looking at other people scrolling through things. And there was loads of hotels. I went on there. I was like, that's the only option. Click. Booked it and everyone's like, but there's no hotels. Look, I say none available. And we I was like, had the last hotel, last room in the hotel, and we, hmm. um, and I didn't even think we were going to get on that flight because there was already people booked on the flight the following morning, and yeah. then an entire flight was then trying to get seats on that one as hmm. well, and then people started crying because they couldn't get hotels, and they were going, well, we can't. There's no hotels available, and the staff were just like, like, what do you want us to do about it? Yeah, <laughs> and then there was a, y- a really young couple, and the they were on their first holiday. 
and he was shaking like a leaf because he couldn't get a hotel and he was like, I don't know what to do. She was breaking her heart. Abigail turned to me and said, they're going to have to stay in our room. I was like, I'm not having random people in our room. She said no and I was like, <gasps> but they're on their own. And then she started crying. I was going, pull yourself together. But it was You're because... not having random people. I said, they could be anybody. <laughs> All right, they're crying now, but you don't know who they are. They don't know what they do. I said, I'm not having random people staying in a oh, room they go to Disneyland. They, could, they would have been lovely. <laughs> no, I was like, pull yourself together. Oh. I think it was just the fact that we had been in that airport for so long. So much had gone wrong. I was hormonal. I was on my period. And I was just like, I'm hormonal. I'm tired. I want to go home. Like, just let me go home. And then they were crying. I was like, just let him stay in my room. I don't care. I just want to go home. And then we were told... We I would have slept in the airport and given my room, if I'm honest. <laughs> we had to get back through security then, to get back out of the airport. Um, and that was a kerfuffle then, because the, the woman was... Oh, I, I don't even know what she was doing. But I was like, look, she got an access card. We can't the queue was massive, see, wasn't it? Because yeah. it was all the people that had, all the flights that had just come in were in the queue. Plus, all the flights that had just got cancelled were in the queue. And it was like so long. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to stand in that queue. There's just no way I'm not going to be able to do it. Um, and the one woman was like, okay, it's fine. I'm going to sort it. But the other member of staff was just like, it's fine, it's fine. And she was just so blase about it. I was like, well, it's not fine. Like, I can't do it. So they managed to open up a little lane for us to do priority, which was great. But then we got to the other side and she said, you walk this way. I said, how far have we got to walk? Obviously, because I can't walk that very far. So I'm just trying to kind of gauge in my mind if I'm going to have to take breaks, if like what the situation is so that I can prepare myself for what's to come. Because I can't just walk willy-nilly like... And just expect to be fine. Like, I, that's just not, especially so exhausted and tired after the week, we, uh, the couple of days we'd had. I said, like, just walk. Screamed in her face. Absolutely ridiculous. screamed in her face. I have never experienced anything like that in my life. Oh my God, I saw red, didn't I? Yeah. I left you there screaming. I was uh, like, I'm not uh, even Abigail speaking to just, you. Abigail just. I literally went, that woman is so rude and just walked off. <laughs> and I was going, you just said that to a disabled person. You just told a disabled person, just walk. <laughs> she went, Oh, well, there's nothing else I can do for you. I said, but do you hear what I'm saying? You just screamed at a disabled person and told them to just walk. Didn't, just didn't care, did she? But then when, when I was sat on the floor, because I physically couldn't walk any further, because my joints were all swollen and thing, and they were trying to discuss what we were supposed to be doing, because we were like a herded cattle at that point. She came over, she said, oh, how are you feeling? How are you? I went, well, I'm, well I just looked at her. I was just like, I couldn't, like express any words i was like why are you talking to me like i don't even want to speak to you right now i don't want to look and at she you. just went hmm, and walked off <laughs> oh my god she was just like i i understand that she has a very hard job when there's a lot of people to deal with and a cancel flight oh, yeah just walk you're not the only person i have to deal with is what she said yeah yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> i get it but like there's a way to speak to people mm. and you were in a position i mean you work for a company you're the, the face of a company mm. You, 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 she shouldn't Rude. be doing that. And then she also told us to walk a completely different direction to she get on did. a bus. Then was um, the, the, all those doors were closed. So if I had actually walked up there and then I had to walk all the way back down to walk a different direction, I would probably murder her. Yeah, I would have murdered her. No, hmm. <laughs> we definitely wouldn't be coming home then. <laughs> <laughs> but we finally got to where we needed to go for the transfer. Got on the the little mini bus to take us to the hotel. And arrived at the hotel and they said, oh, EasyJet only covered the um, transfer one way, so you have to pay to get back to the airport in the morning. I was like, whatever, we're going to claim it back anyway, but that's... Yeah, it was only like seven euros yeah. each. Uh, but that's really daft. Like, if you're mm. going to cover it, cover it both ways. Anyway, we paid it, that was that. We knew we were going to claim it back anyway. Um, we had arrived too late for food. Um, the restaurant was closed. So they arranged like little pack lunch boxes of like... Warm, chicken pasta warmed up chicken pasta that was I quite enjoyed it but I think I was just starving <laughs> I did not eat it um, I ate the little cake that was on the side but I did not eat that chicken it was just I think I just lived off cakes and pastries I the did. entire time I was there so that was that we went to bed exhausted woke up the following morning realised that because I thought I was leaving the country the day before um, we'd used the toothpaste to clean our teeth and I thought, well, I don't need this anymore now we're going home. And I threw, because it was only like a little mini and we'd use most of it, threw it in the bin, one less thing to carry. And then I had to clean my teeth with a dry toothbrush because I had no toothpaste. And then just eat mint after. <laughs> 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 oh. 
and then we repacked our suitcase she had enough breakfast to fit three people (laughs) i definitely made full use of that buffet breakfast let me tell you I had my starters, then, my as we sat in, As we went into the, uh, the buffet breakfast, there's a massive sign in the lobby saying EasyJet um, transfer bus uh, 7.30. But like we got to breakfast at 7.30, so we missed that bus because they yes. didn't put the poster up until the, everyone had gone to bed. Yeah, they waited for us all to arrive at the hotel, all check in, all go to bed, and then put a poster up to say half past seven in the morning, there's going to be a bus. <laughs> so we missed that bus and just got the transfer anyway that we'd paid for. Um <laughs> And as we was on the transfer going to the airport, uh, we had another text to say your flight has been delayed. We thought, oh my God, we're never leaving this country. We are never going home. I honestly, home. I was just thinking about my life that I was going to live in Paris. <laughs> I mean, I was going to work, what I was going to do. <laughs> like Emily in Paris, but like real life. I've never seen her, but yeah. Oh my God. And then we get to the airport. I lose it again through passport, but I was expecting that time, so it's fine. Um, get the other side. And I've they, got so many French stamps on my passport. <laughs> no, I mean, it's lovely in there. It's actually filling pages. And then um, and then it updated, didn't it, to say it was on time. We were like, yeah. oh, maybe we will actually leave the country. But we didn't believe it until we were sat on the flight. They closed the door and the engine started. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the um, I was going to say the driver then. There's not a driver, it's a pilot. The pilot was like, yeah, we're leaving. I was like, yes. I, I mean, we, we taxied for 20 minutes in a circle. Yeah, he just kept driving around. I think it, he was like, I'm not losing this spot. I'm warming up my tyres. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then we got home. In 45 minutes. In 45 minutes, yeah. Lost again, the other side in security. I, I just know what's going to happen now every time we go somewhere. Yeah. So it's fine. I know, I just got I try to avoid lunch. those machines if I can, but they always just send me to those machines, so... Mm. So... I just sit on the bench now and wait for her to finally get through security. Hmm. And we arrived home. Yeah. And vowed never ever to leave the country ever again. <laughs> no, I didn't. I knew I was going. <laughs> but yeah, it was chaos. Yeah, start to finish. And then uh, Christy was like, I'm going to go home to sleep now. And I was like, oh, i got to go and get my child from school. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't. I still don't feel like I've caught up on my sleep, if I'm honest. Well, I don't either. And I had a break from my child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is life? So that little vent was episode four. I feel like we need to just get off our chest. If you want to watch the actual events unfold in real time, we've got a vlog on our channel. Yeah. You can go and watch the vlog. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just chaos from start to finish. Mm. But it made for a really good adventure and a podcast episode. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Mm. And I'm put us off. We will be doing it again. Yeah. I'm already planning the next one. <laughs> so thanks for listening or watching. And we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Mother, baby, and us.